Hey there folks, my name is Caleb Downing and today we're going to talk about a brief history of the modern cartridge, where we came from and potentially where we might be going. Let's talk about it. All right, like I said, this is going to be brief. This is not going to be an in-depth, all the dates, all the names, all the stuff. This is very brief. To keep it simple, keep it short, all right? So let's do this. So back in the day, the Chinese, they started with the gunpowder thing, right? They invented it, they figured it out. That's our understanding of it. Um, I believe um, some Arab nations and stuff had stuff going on as well, but the Chinese, that's who we basically give credit to. All right, they did fireworks, they attached rockets to spears, um, all that kind of thing. I, I believe, again, it was, I believe it was the Arabs um, and those people in those areas that would use gunpowder in either bamboo and put an arrow down there. They had the idea of a firearm, right? Give, it to, give credit to whoever credit is due, it's hard to tell exactly, okay? But that's that changed weaponry, all right? It, it went from having to use swords and knives, right, and bows and arrows, to things that could defeat that from a longer range, right? And could explode, right? That, I mean, it kind of diverges off into explosions, which is like grenades and stuff like that. Not quite getting onto that because we're talking about the cartridge, right? But that technology, technically, right, some things changed, some science, Science didn't necessarily change, but people figured things out. But the whole concept of the cartridge didn't change for a long time, right? You had, even up to the days of the flint locks um, and the match locks, the concept was the same, where you had a hollow tube, right? Way back in the day, like a bamboo stick, basically, and you hollow it out, and up even till the flint locks and match locks, where you have a steel uh, barrel, right? It's the same thing, it's a hollow tube, you would put powder, your, you know, your, your, your charge down the, that, down the barrel. You put a wad, whether that be uh, water, that piece of paper, or cloth, or something like that. And you would put a projectile on top of that. You would ram it down into the breech. You would pack it in there nice and tight. And then you would have to have some kind of a flash powder, right? Talking specifically about like the, the flint locks and the match locks, you would have to basically be like a little pan on the side of the firearm, right near the breech, that had a little hole into the breech. Um, where your main charge was, and you would have a flash powder, right? With the flint locks, when the when the hammer came down, would have the flint attached to it, struck the steel, the seal, the steel, sorry, struck the steel, created a spark, lit the flash or lit, lit, lit the flash powder that would ignite the main charge and make the firearm go, go off. That's where we get the term of flash in the pan, right? If you ever wonder where that came from, there you go. It makes sense. It's just a flash in the pan. It's just and nothing, right? unless, you know, obviously it's supposed to ignite the main charge. But anyway, the same thing with a match lock. Instead of having a flint and it's steel, you would just have your hammer, right? But you would have kind of attached a rope, a smoldering rope. And people would have to light it one way or the other, but it would be a smoldering rope. And you can see these old pictures of people like like knights basically wearing armor and having these these match locks like that. This was way old. This is this is how it started and it just kind of stayed that way, right? That 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 again, sorry. I got on a rabbit trail. That match lock, right, having that smoldering rope, when that hammer went down, the smoldering rope would hit that flash uh, powder, light it the same way, basically, in essence, as the, as the flint lock, okay? And basically, they're just two different ways of creating, creating fire, creating the spark. Either you have a spark or you have a smoldering coal, basically. But that kind of technology didn't really change significantly until they decided that this doesn't work very well. All right, I'm sure if you could go back in the day and if they had videos, imagine if they had the old olden day like YouTube stuff, it'd be wild. It would be so crazy to see people developing stuff. I'm sure it'd be rather horrific in some instances, but it'd probably be pretty comical in some other instances to see people messing around with this kind of stuff, okay? Because they understood, I'm sure even at the time they understood it's it not very, it didn't work very well to have to have all your components separate, right? Your powder, your projectile, and your flash powder at the time, all separate. And you gotta load it all each time, right? Ram it all down the barrel, pack it up nice and tight, keep it dry. I can't even imagine, I live in Alabama, I can't even imagine trying to keep the humidity out of powder and flash powder and all that stuff. I, ooh, it would just, it would drive me insane. But obviously they, they realized that that's not the best thing because as time went on, people started developing ideas and making that into an actual thing, right? Like the percussion cap, right? Instead of having to have the flint or the match lock, they developed a percussion cap. Imagine your modern day, I mean, you have cap guns, right? I, used, I think you can still get cap guns at Walmart. 
but you have a cap, right? You have a self-contained unit, right? That in, in the modern era, it's basically a metal cap, like a bowl, right? That has an anvil, it has a, a piece of metal on the inside that's pointed down. And when the firing pin strikes the bottom of the, um, of the primer, it pinches basically. Just kind of imagine, in essence, like the flintlock where it pinches, it hits, it, it, it smacks, right? That creates that small spark, which on the inside of that primer, you have, in essence, flash powder. You have a primer compound, right? Which that explodes and that lights your main charge, right? You can see, even me jumping a little bit ahead, you can see we haven't changed that much from even back in the day. It's kind of crazy, it's kind of crazy. That brings us up to around the 1830s, 1840s, somewhere around in there. Uh, they decided to put all this stuff together, all right? Might have been a little bit before then. But they put all this together, but they, they didn't quite do it right the first time. They tried to make a self-contained, which is good, but a self-consuming cartridge. I think some people have kind of revamped that today even, but a self-consuming cartridge sounds good. Imagine, if you will, a projectile encased in like paper or something like that um, with the, I mean, basically that, that's what it would be. Instead of a metal, um, yeah, instead of a metal casing, you have, pla not plastic, but you have a paper casing so that whenever the firearm goes off, right, when that, whenever the whole system works and the ignition goes off, the propellant lights, the whole thing burns up, expels the projectile out the barrel and there's nothing left in the chamber. In essence, that sounds good, but it just, it, it didn't pan out very well. Pan out like a flash pan, sorry. I got jokes and they're not very good. Um, but it didn't, it didn't work out too well. But they, do, they did have the concept of the primer, right? The concept was there. And so that developed later on as you get more around towards the, like the Civil War time where you have the Sharps rifle, okay? Imagine the Old West, they have the Sharps rifle. That changed stuff. That changed stuff so much because instead of having to carry all your components different, right? Separate, right? Your, your powder, your projectile, your flash powder, all that stuff, you know, keeping everything dry and everything. They wrapped everything up in a nice little case, a metal case that is a lot more resistant to the elements, right? I mean, this thing, you could throw it around. This guy, especially modern ones, you talk about some real good modern ones, they're actually sealed, right? So this can go underwater. Obviously, if it goes underwater, you should check it out. But they have casings nowadays that are pretty much waterproof, right? They're made to go underwater to be submerged. Back in the day, it wasn't as good as it is now, but they had the idea down. And, and not only that, but the fact that you can load a firearm so much quicker. They loaded it from the breech instead of from the muzzle. That makes a big difference. All right, so that brings us kind of around uh, the Civil War era, basically, all right? They, they discovered that, yes, the, the self-consuming paper cartridge in theory it works, but really it's just not the best idea. They, so they came out with, with brass or metal casings instead of the paper self-consuming, um, which worked way, way better, okay? The fact that you still use a primer, you still have your projectile, you still have your propellant on the inside, but it's way easier to take your cartridge, insert it into the, into the breech, you fire it around, you pop it out, imagine like the old shotguns or the shotguns we have now, the single shots where you, know, you pop it open, you, ex you expel or eject your, your, your shell or your casing, load your new one in and you're ready to go. It, it was a lot more efficient. It, it continued to change things because as, as you're able to be more efficient with your ammunition and efficient with your firearm, it, that, that changed power, right? That, that changed history. Honestly, it really changed history. That technology did not really change. After that cartridge, because that's the main thing we're talking about today, after the cartridge, cartridge was self-contained in a metal casing, really the only things that had have changed since then till now are your, you just, just the science in developing the, the powder, right? You have powders that burn faster, right? You have smokeless powders, powders that are specific for pistols and powders, powders that are specific to rifles, right? Fast burning, slow burning, all that kind of stuff. That, has what it, that is what has really changed nowadays. The brass itself is not so much any different. The chambers, the, the way the metallurgy, the way that the, the barrels are made, that has changed, right? Because you can't, you have to be careful about some of your really older firearms. If you take a modern high pressure round and stick it in a really old firearm that is not made 
the, the steel is not the same kind of steel you want to use with the with the modern cartridges, you can really you can get hurt, right? You can you can blow stuff up. That's it's not meant to handle the, that kind of stress, right? That's why you got to be careful about some of those really really old guns. If you got your grandpa's or great grandpa's old firearm, be real careful about going out and getting a modern day cartridge and sticking it in there. It may not be the best idea. Um, but the whole concept of the cartridge has not really changed. That brings that really brings us up to today. Um, to where we've kind of capped, capped out, like plateaued out as far as what can we do. I remember a couple years ago they came out with the 224 Valkyrie. It was, it's, it's just a different packaging of the same materials. You have a 22 caliber cartridge, but you're pushing the bullet faster, right? That's what people tend to want to do. They, they want to push the bullet faster, or in the case of like this 300 Blackout, they want to take a heavier bullet and push it slower to make it subsonic. You, people are, are messing around and, and we're fooling around with the different levels, basically, is how you think about it, different levels of power, right? You got your speed, you wanna go really fast or you wanna go really slow. You wanna be really heavy or you wanna be really light bullet. You want a hard cast metal bullet or you want a hollow point. All right, guys, that is pretty much it. That's where we've plateaued out today pretty much until a breakthrough in science or technology changes or happens occurs and we get away from having to have a metal casing you know wrapped around a a propellant like we have today fired off by a, a primer which really in technology hasn't changed in a very very long time in hundreds of years it really hasn't changed all that much so still until we have a major breakthrough and change we're going to be stuck pretty much with the same kind of cartridge that we have today all right, guys, so let me know what you think about all that. Do you think we're going to go to some kind of new space age, just laser gun kind of thing? I don't know, honestly. Until something like that happens, we're stuck with this. Or do you think we're going to be using this kind of cartridge for the foreseeable, you know, next thousand years? What do you think we're going to be using in a thousand years? That'd be crazy to even think about that. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. It wasn't a, again, it was not a super deep, in uh, in-depth, detailed history, right? I'm not a history teacher. That's not what I do. Um, I, we didn't go over a whole bunch of dates and names and all that kind of stuff, but we kind of talked about where we came from, potentially where we might be going. All right. Hope you enjoyed that. That'll be good to be safe and hopefully we will catch y'all on our next video.